Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's question I got from one of my subscribers and here's a question. Rottweiler A is a father of male Rotti B and female Rotti C. Rottweiler B and C have different unrelated but purebred Rotti mothers. If Rottweiler B and C have siblings, have a pup, is it true that pup will probably be 87.5% of Rottweiler A grandfather as far as genes are concerned, producing a close replica of Roti A. Take a look. We are told that Rottweiler A is a father. So Rottweiler A here. And he is a father of the male Roti B and female Roti C. So let also draw them here from two unrelated mothers. So one mother, his another mother. So this is going to be our pedigree and male Roti B. So let's put it here, male Roti B and female Roti C. So let's put it here. And on our pedigree, we specify them as B and C. So take a look, Rottweiler B and C have different unrelated but purebred roti mothers. This is exactly what we see here on this pedigree. Next, Rottweiler B and C, which are half siblings, and as you see they are half siblings, have a pup. So let's add a pup here. We have to put a line here. Because this is consanguinity mating, we show it with double line. That means that here is a mating of two close relatives. And here we show the result of this mating, the pup of unspecified sex. So when sex specified, we use these symbols. When sex is not specified, we use this symbol. So this is generation one, this is generation two, and this is generation three. Now let me use different colors to specify genotypes of the parents in the first generation. For example, this female would be uh, coded with white color. And this uh, male A, we use red color to specify his genotype and blue for this female. So what genotypes of the pups in the second generation are going to be. It is very easy to say that, for example, pup B male would inherit 50% of its genes and chromosomes from the mother, another 50% from the father. And as for the second one, again, 50% would inherit from the father side and 50% from the mother side. Now what about pup in the third generation. What this pup is going to inherit from its parents and of course it's going to be 50% from the father side. So let's say this is going to be this 50% and 50% from the mother side. So this 50%. Take a look. It's going to be 25% white, 25% red from the father side, 25% red and 25% blue from the mother side. So let's add these colors. Take a look. From the father side, it's going to inherit 25% white, also 25% red, and from the mother side, 25% red and 25% blue. So each line here represents 25%. So how much genes this pup would share with its grandfather. So as you see, this pup got from the father side 25% the same genes as grandfather had and from the mother side also 25%. So together this makes 50% same genes as in grandfather. And what is interesting that his parents also have 50% percent of the genes of the their father. So 
that means that this pop in the third generation technically being a grandson or granddaughter of the Rottweiler A would have the same genetic makeup and the same kinship as son and daughter of Rottweiler A. So another way to think about it that this grandson or granddaughter would be as close to Rottweiler A as a son or a daughter. For example, any of this. Let me add some more information here for another 25%. As you see, this white line stand for it would be inherited from the father side and would represent genotype of the grandmother. And another 25% here would be inherited from the mother side and would represent genotype of the grandmother. So together, as you see, 25 plus 25 plus 25 and plus 25 would make 100% of the genotype of this pup and 50% would come from the grandparent A. So our answer is going to be that there is no way that this pup would be 87.5% the same genotype as grandfather A. But now I want you to show you how to get 87.5% in the progeny of this Rottweiler, but don't do it because this is very high in breeding and your pup would have serious health issues because dogs are not the same like, for example, laboratory mice, which can be 100% in bred. Dogs don't uh, tolerate in breeding very well. That's why usually in pure breeds, you usually can find that dogs have multiple health issues and their life expectancy sometimes can be just half of what normal dogs have, which are not pure breed. Now imagine that this is Rottweiler A. So this is Rottweiler A and we made it with some other Rottweiler and in the progeny, Let's say this is going to be female. Again, it's going to be 50% genetic makeup of the father and 50% genetic makeup of the mother. So far, so good. So 50%, let me put it here, genotype of the father. So how we can increase this number? In this case, we have to mate father back to its daughter. And in next progeny, we are going to get, uh, for example, multiple uh, pups, but we are interested only in female pups. So here's a female pup. It's going to resemble its father A now by 75%. We call this back crossing. And if you need even increase in breeding more than this number, what you have to do again, you have to back cross father A with its daughter. And any progeny that you're going to get in this litter, regardless of the sex, is going to be, how much do you think? The same genotype as father A. If you think that this is going to be 100%, this is not so. Take a look. If in the first variant we got 50%, second we added another 25%, which is half of this 50%, then in this generation all these pups are going to be half of uh, what we add here, 25%. So half of 25 is going to be 12.5. That means that we have to add 75 plus 12.5 is going to be 80. 7.5%. So these pups are going to be inbred 87.5%. This is exactly what we see here. And as I said, if for example, here, we don't see any inbreeding depression, this is what normally happens with animating. But in the next generation, we can see inbreeding depression and in the next generation, it's even going to be greater 
than in previous generation. And probably you cannot go farther than this because you're probably not going to get any viable progeny or it's going to be infertile. In which cases we have to use this technique of back crossing. For example, if you got single trait never seen ever before in any dogs, so you cannot find another dog with such a trait, but you want to fix it. So in this case, you're going to use this back crossing method. For example, you got a green dog. So of course there is no another such dog in the whole world. Then you're going to use this method. But again, you probably don't have to go farther than uh, this uh, second step. You don't have to uh, do another back crossing, for example, with this daughter. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.